We are here at the Nate University in Edmonton. It is November 3rd, Saturday, 2018. And Bree and Brooke are going to be speaking at the Wisdom High School and Beyond Conference. with four eyes and their mouths looking at us. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Good to see so many of you here. We have some grads that have gone through their homeschooling experience and moved on into life in, in uh, various degrees and, and we're here to hear them tell their story and have the opportunity to ask them some questions as well. So um, as we begin, I'll just invite them to come up. So Anne Gulliker from, uh, from from Heller area, please welcome her. <laughs> and we have Brooklyn Beagle from the Grovedale area. Who knows where Grovedale is? <laughs> I do too. We used to go visiting down in that area. That's up by Grand Prairie. So, welcome. And then, uh, you guys are sisters, right? Yeah. You got the same last name, but you just never know. Okay, so, we have Brianne Beagle as well. <laughs> welcome. And a little uh, more locally grown, we have Bernadette McDonald from Mundell. Once upon a time, in 990 BC, they lived a king. He is considered, considered to be the wisest man who ever lived. His name was Solomon. King Solomon had everything he could desire, and this is what he said as he neared the end of his life. Remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy youth. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Hello everyone. It's a pleasure for Brooklyn and I to be here with you today. Thank you Glenn Spies for contacting us for this event. And also thank you to Randy Cobb, our family's facilitator uh, for many years. And of course thank you to the Wisdom staff for all the work that you do. Of course, uh, Brooklyn and I, we are very grateful for this opportunity to be here and share our hearts in regards to our home education experience and we hope to be an encouragement to you on your individual educational journey. Every, uh, homeschool, every homeschooler is different, and every family is different. Every individual has their own unique story. As much as home education has had its challenges for us, and the fact that our parents were, um, neither of them were home educated, and this made the uh, initial step steps daunting to say the least, uh, we feel confident that God has used this decision of our parents for his honor and glory. Uh, as a side note, I'm just uh, coming a cold, so that's why my voice is a little low today. And now for introductions. This is my twin sister, Brooklyn. She loves the Lord Jesus with all of her heart, and she's one of my best friends. Uh, there are seven other of my best friends over here, all of my siblings in the front row. Uh, that's wonderful to have them here with us. And Brooklyn has received her ARCT diploma in violin performance and currently has a thriving violin studio. She has taught violin for nearly 10 years, at times having a studio of up to 28 students. She's taught violin at the GPRC College in Grand Prairie for six years, and she's a qualified Suzuki instructor who has completed several teacher development courses at Suzuki Institutes. Brooklyn's also been trained as a doula for assisting childbirth. And she is also a gifted author, a playwright, actress, and drama director. Um, over the last few years, she has directed um, and acted.
active in several plays that she wrote. And here's a fun fact. She did not learn to read until she was 10 years old. Thank you, Brie. Uh, this is my twin sister, Brianne. She's older by seven minutes, I might add. Um, I should also mention that Brianne didn't read until she was 20, I mean 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna is uh, currently in her 12th year of teaching music, and she loves to work with all of her 31 uh, piano and guitar students throughout the week. She's received her ARCD diploma in piano performance from the Royal Conservatory of Music. She has studied conducting guitar, voice, musical theater, and drama. She's also been trained as a doula. And as you might have guessed, we hope to one day be assisting each other at our births as doulas if we are not giving birth at the same time. <laughs> but Brienne loves to spend time outdoors with her siblings and she's also a qualified coach in the arts of tanning leather, hunting, natural horsemanship, make, and also making raw milk artisan goat cheeses. There are 11 people in our home. There's mom, dad, seven girls, and two boys. To learn more about us, you can check out our uh, YouTube channel, The Beagle Family, and we post videos every week. So you may have fun uh, looking that up. And now Brooklyn is going to share with you uh, one of the very influential experiences that we both shared during our high school years. Our parents were our primary educators. Uh, siblings were, not surprisingly, our secondary educators, and I'm sure a lot of you out there who have younger siblings can attest to the unique qualifications that younger siblings often have on our developing um, self-control and patience. Um, so uh, we've also been blessed to receive instruction from many qualified music teachers uh, all throughout Canada, from Montreal to Vancouver Island, as well as California. Dad and Mom, they took a practical, biblical approach to our education. There were three sets of prior priorities in our home. The first priority was cultivating our relationships with our Creator God, with our parents, and with our siblings. After this came outdoor bushcraft and survival skills, animal husbandry, and homemaking. The three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, came next. Using a dictionary without um, uh, being able to use a dictionary and to spell without a uh, spell check and ciphering math problems without a calculator was essential in mom and dad's uh, view of education. Um, and our parents were confident that if we could do that, then we could pretty much figure out anything we would set our minds to. Our schoolhouse was also known as the family meal table. It is here that we have learned to dialogue and resolve arguments, as well as where we have learned to love and respect one another's views and opinions on life. Most importantly, however, here in our one-room schoolhouse, we have learned to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all our hearts, mind, body, and soul, and to serve Him, and to realize His blessed, blessed love and his plan for each of us. In my early teens, I loved to read, thank you, read, write, and play violin, sew my own clothes, ride horses, and study nature. I loved reading Longfellow's poetry, the encyclopedia, and anything on world history. Neither of us wrote the typical school exams. The only tests we prepared were for the Royal Conservatory of Music, um, we wrote our uh, learner's and driver's license tests, and the term high school sounded daunting, to say the least. I struggled with a lot of anxiety, and we actually both did, as we approached this time in our life. I felt anxious about what I wanted to be, uh, not what I, I wasn't anxious about what I wanted to become, but I was very anxious about how in the world I was going to get there. When I turned to look at what other homeschoolers were doing and compared my deficiencies with their strengths, I definitely felt like a failure. Bree and I were on actually very similar journeys throughout this time, and we both began to feel that if we didn't get into college or university, our cause was hopeless. 
We became determined to prove that homeschoolers could get into college. We were determined to be smart, to get certified, and to make a statement. Um, but however gung-ho we both were to embark on this new adventure, in all of our hassle and haste, we almost forgot to prayerfully consider and evaluate the costs that we might need to pay in order to get there. I'll just say right now that neither of us did end up attending university, even though we have many resolutions and so-called green lights to go. Um, it didn't become part of our history, um, although we did make su successful steps toward it. God had other plans. We both experienced some uh, tremendous outside pressure, actually, to attend university. Um, and our final meeting with one of our professors uh, at one of these meetings, they indicated very plainly that because, our, because of our unique giftings as students, we needed to uh, prepare ourselves to give back to society, meaning uh, that we should still consider getting that degree. Of course, it is very important that we all seek to become equipped to enrich our culture and help others whenever we can. But a question we should also be asking ourselves at the same time is, is this, is a university degree the only way that we can truly give back? So that's the question that we really had to grapple with. And it was really hard. It's really hard to try to understand, okay, how can I give back if I don't have a ticket or whatever? Like, am I really qualified if I don't have a piece of paper saying that I did this? But uh, anyway, back in 2013, as we continued to pursue entering college, I passed my placement exam and superseded the English 30 requirements at the Grand Prairie Regional College. And so despite my misgivings about not having had an official English tutor and not having had my Alberta diploma, I did discover that I was still able to enter college. Bree took a slightly different route and passed English 30 diploma exam and proceeded to begin earning college credits over the summer through Athabasca University. So everything was, all, there was all green lights, we were ready to go. Um, to start in Grand Prairie and then move to Edmonton uh, was uh, transferring our credits uh, after attending GPRC. Um, and this, would, uh, this journey would take us approximately four years to complete. But to our shock and amazement, that university-bound coach came quickly to a screeching halt when the why question really truly hit home. So uh, when we had to ask the why question, why were we doing it, it became a time of soul searching and prayer for both of us. So we asked why, why were we doing it? Was it to please God or to please ourselves? Was it to serve others or to serve our own purpose and glory? I know for me it was uh, a very, very tempting to, uh, okay, I get this degree and then I'm going to want to get to the next one and the next one and it's never going to end. It won't, never will be enough. That's how I personally felt. Um, and then the other question was, what exactly would we need to sacrifice in order to get through university? And where was our loyalty really? So that was the next question that we were faced with. And with it, um, we saw the vibrant picture of our quiet country lifestyle, which we value so much. Our group of students, our family, all take the back seat while we moved into the city. It was a high price, we felt, for a typical university education, and we finally came to the point where we knew that at least at that time, our answer was going to be no. It has been five years since we made that decision, and never once have we looked back. I too have not regretted the decision that we made five years ago and uh, we feel both very, very grateful that we can savor each day that we have to live together with our family. 
now we'll move on. Um, we want to share with you some things that we learned during high school. I'm sure that we can all agree that education is a lifelong journey. And education doesn't just mean schoolwork. Being educated doesn't just mean having a degree or a diploma. However, these accomplishments are admirable and certainly do have their merit. Here are two major things that we learned during high school, which we consider to be two of the most important ingredients in a successful education. To be truthful and to take responsibility. First, let's discuss truthfulness. Since childhood, Brooklyn and I have been taught to tell the truth. I'm sure you all have been as well. Don't tell a lie is a common phrase that we've all grown up with. Do you appreciate when someone is truthful with you? Of course. Interestingly, however, despite the fact that telling the truth is an obvious lesson a child needs to learn, deception is not something that we necessarily outgrow after high school. In fact, sometimes honesty is an even greater challenge as we get older. John Ruskin lived during the 1800s, and he was the leading English art critic of the Victorian era, as well as an art patron, a draftsman, watercolorist, and a prominent social thinker and philanthropist. This is what he said. To make your children capable of honesty is the beginning of education. The world is full of lies. We've all seen the false advertising. We've heard the empty promises. There are scams on every corner. Likely, each one of us in this room has told a lie at some point in our life. And we all know that one lie leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another. It's a very, very slippery slope. Living in deception is like living in a jail cell. If we don't have truth, what do we have? I don't want to be deceived. Do you? Brooke? Of course not. None of us want to be deceived. But how will we not be deceived? Have you ever thought of a solution? How can we live in this world without being deceived? Here's an illustration. When it comes to recognizing deception, you may have heard the following metaphor. When federal agents are trained to identify counterfeit money, do you know how they do it? Do you know how they do not do it? They do not study the counterfeits. Rather, they study the real money so that when they spot fake money, they can recognize it right away. So, by taking this example, how can we avoid being deceived? Well, we need to continually examine the truth, which leads us to the age-old question, what is the truth? Well, here is something to consider on your search for truth. Jesus Christ, another very prominent historical figure, said in John 8, 31 to 32, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now for the second most important ingredient of a great education, taking responsibility, both in school and in life. First we learned responsibility in school. Taking responsibility for our education dramatically improved our retention and enjoyment of the material we were studying, whether it was music, drama, history, math, whole works. It was primarily during our high school years that we both decided to take responsibility for education instead of allowing um, somebody else to dictate what we were supposed to do. We, have, we wanted to set our goals and we took responsibility for that and it was it was really tough at the beginning, but it did, it did pay off. So, um, second, uh, we learn responsibility in life. So, in school and in life. Um, and remember, education isn't just about schoolwork. It is about life. How can we live as um, kind people, loving people? How can we serve others and um, 
serve ourselves, serve others rather than ourselves. And years after high school, we are still learning these things because it is a lifelong journey. So in conclusion, no matter what path that we choose, whether it be university, whether it be a farmer, a teacher, a housewife, an engineer or a carpenter, an author, a poet, a playwright, or a lawyer, or a mother, which includes all of the above, by the way. Thank you, Mom. There is one thing that this world is in desperate, desperate need of, and it is men and women who will speak the truth and take responsibility. So when it comes to defining your future, Brooklyn and I both hope that you will remember to always be truthful and take responsibility. And now, I'd like to just ask Brooklyn, what is your favorite thing about your life right now, after high school? Okay, so I just love uh, the freedom that I have to spend time with my family, spend time outdoors with the goat herd, explore nature with my siblings, long talks way past midnight with my siblings up on, <laughs> in our bedroom, <laughs> hours and hours together. Um, I love pursuing herbalism and having the time to write historical fiction. These things I wouldn't have been able to do had I been spending the past four or five years in college. So, very grateful to the Lord for all that he has given to me. And Brianne, what's, what are some of your favorite things? Pretty similar. Uh, spending time with my parents and my siblings each day. It's such a privilege. And homesteading. Especially, I love making raw goat milk cheese and also teaching piano and guitar. And just lastly, some final thoughts. Uh, we just want to qualify that each of us, again, we're all on a different journey. So maybe you're being called to university. That's great. Maybe you're not. Either way, we just hope that this has been uh, some encouragement to you on your personal adventure. And also, be encouraged to involve your parents and your siblings in your life as much as possible. Seek their counsel. King Solomon said that where no counsel is, the people perish. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And remember, no one has a better invested interest in you than your parents. Amen. And here's our quote from the wisest man who ever lived. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Thank you once again for having us. It's been a privilege. How do you keep your goats in? Because we have goats and they keep getting out all the time. How do you keep your goats in? Alright. Get your pen and take notes. So we spent quite a few years with not the greatest fencing and we did have lots of trouble with the goats getting out. <laughs> it was frustrating. We had boards and patches everywhere. Finally, we got a really nice, uh, durable fencing. I don't. What is it called? That. It's it's like squares. Of, it's squares, and it's about this high. Page wire. Heavy grade wire. Is it page wire? It's quite expensive, but it's worth every penny. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's expensive, but worth every penny, so it's, yeah, worth investing in. And we have not had trouble with goats getting out since, so, yeah. Maybe the goats are just mesmerized by that shape. <laughs> so, yes, I think everything that you study is going to benefit the next thing. For example, um, our parents have been wonderful in giving us a musical education, and even though some of us have thought many times like we don't necessarily want to teach, 
I didn't want to teach when I was uh, in my teens, and now I absolutely love it. <laughs> and I am so grateful for my parents, his, um, their uh, encouragement and everything that they put into that for, for me and all my siblings. And um, for example, math. <laughs> math was also something that was a struggle um, for myself and I think Brooklyn as well. Um, but but um, it really did help us. It helped us in our music, just as the music helps. I actually find it really helps with making cheese, <laughs> and and everything else. It's all it, everything will encourage, uh, encourage your brain to grow and uh, be able to tackle more problems and find solutions. So, I would agree with what the ladies have also said. Um, and like Anna said, like the question, do I really need to know all this math? Like that, that was huge. And it actually uh, led me to um, just pause and think, okay, how is this going to apply to life in stewardship, stewardship math? How can I use um, these math questions in real life? And, uh, Mom was really great with us. She helped us to um, put it into questions like, okay, for example, teaching, you're your own bookkeeper for, uh, like, you're, you're handling the teaching, but you're also, a lot of times, handling billing and needing to, in, in, like, uh, put together all, all the billing schedules for however many, 20, 30 students, and it can get really overwhelming, but the math came in to that situation and it it was easier to see it when you put a picture to it i guess when you have a picture of, of the stewardship so yeah i would just encourage you to make sure it's it's not just numbers like we're not just learning numbers because or, or formulas just because the basic math is the most important like multiplication you need to know solid multiplication our dad was really really on top of us for that, like weird times table, 100%, which I I still need to brush up on that. <laughs> and but I do know how valuable it is because he he can just times table like crazy, and it helps so much not needing to have a calculator if you just know how to skip count. So. What advice would you give your high school self? Probably the advice that I'd give to my high school self would um, be to really, really prioritize properly. Um, make sure that you have your priorities in order. God, family, your health, and then your education and your work. But if you don't have a relationship with, with the Lord and your family, it, everything else, I, I know from personal experience, a lot of times I would put, oh my schoolwork, I need to get my schoolwork done before I can spend time with my siblings or before I can take time to have my Bible study. And I actually can look back and see in, for example, I mentioned um, we took rural conservatory exams. This is just a small example. But I can see like, in my life, during the time when I was focused on my time to do my schoolwork, to get all my things done and do what I wanted, my marks actually reflected that. They, and some, there, there was uh, even uh, some counterpoint exam that I had to redo, and I can look back, and at that time in my life, my priorities were so out of whack. It was, it was very obvious, and then as the Lord took me on this journey of, okay, I need to prioritize the Lord and family and your health and then everything else, it did reflect in my consecutive exams, and the marks did rise. So just, um, I'd encourage, if I was to go back, I would definitely prioritize things um, better. Very much the same points as Anna and Brooklyn have made. 
um, like Anna said, taking that space, um, taking time would be something that I would encourage my high school self to do. Time with my parents. Having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with them and also with my siblings. Just taking time to talk with them, get to know them. You're only at this place in your life once and then it's gone. Do not take it for granted. So how do you balance your passion for music with all the other stuff that goes part of your education journey? We were very fortunate to have music be an integrated part of our life. Uh, we started music at a very early age and it just kind of became something that we did. Um, it was just integrated right into the schedule. Um, I guess practically trying to have that as part of your goal. Um, say every day you need to practice an hour of piano or um, whatever it be. It's much better to get a small amount of practice in more often rather than try and cram like three hours in if you haven't had three or four days of practice. So smaller chunks are a lot better than huge ones that you try and gulp down. Also, um, music is a language in itself. And there are so many subjects that tie into the musical education. So if you're studying music, you're studying history, you're studying poetry, architecture, drama, and uh, nature even, math, music is math. Music is a second language. We didn't learn French, but we did learn music. So all of these things, it was, it, mom and dad didn't even realize what they were giving us when they gave us a musical education. They really didn't. But we can look back now and that is, like that was the, the um, bedrock of uh, the academic, I guess you might say. So yeah, there's so many things that tie into, into music. I hope that helps. How did you integrate biblical studies into your everyday school life? So uh, the Bible has always been the bedrock of our education. Um, it is what we consider and we know to be the truth and something that was really laid on our parents' hearts a long time ago and has been such an important part is what we call Torah time. And we don't do it so much anymore because our life just has um, changed to including it at the breakfast table. But uh, a few years ago, it was laid on our mom's heart to just begin reading through the books of Moses starting in Genesis and just reading through it and then talking and then praying. And that was at nine o'clock to 10 o'clock every morning. So we'd wake up, have breakfast, um, do a little bit of Bible um, at the table, and then go do our chores, come back, and read the Bible and discuss it and have lots and lots of dialogue about it. And we really noticed that when we spent that time in the Word of God, it dramatically improved every other area of our study. And then also, aside from that, we each individually um, spend our own time in the scriptures when it works in our schedule because we all have a little bit of a different schedule as siblings but um, that has been very very important in our education journey I think that's an awesome question by the way um, this, this takes me back to uh, the discussion about prioritizing and I uh, personally realized that when I began to put the Lord Jesus first in my life it changed everything and it made the academics and the music practice and even teaching my own students it made it so much easier everything flowed whereas before when I would make it oh to, late at night going to bed I didn't read my Bible didn't do any prayer man and then it's rushed but I found um, that when the Lord would put on my heart, okay, you give me the best hours of your day, 
And I will give you the time that you need to complete these projects. And when I finally did that, it, it revolutionized my life. Put him first, and he will definitely fulfill the desires of your heart, and he will help you to get all of those academics accomplished. So, yeah, be encouraged. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Brianna and Brooklyn and Tony Depps and Anna for giving yourselves just to um, help us to be encouraged in our own journeys. And we're very grateful for what you've done for us. Please give